Well, it is like, you're like, oh man, love is an astronaut. Damn. And then astronauts Yeah, that's such a high it. thought. Yeah, exactly. That's, what, that's, that's why I feel like when you hear the song, you're just like, whoa, you're just like, man, love yeah, is like, an astronaut. Oh, love oh, is an astronaut, dude. Think about it. Okay. Oh, yes, man. I know. I know. I know. I've been saying it all my life. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Lyric Boys podcast. I am Lucian Flores and with me is Andrew Stieglitz. Andrew, say hello. Hello and how are you on this fine eve, Lucian? I'm doing great. I'm excited to record this episode all about LCD sound system with you. All right, people listening. If you don't know what the Lyric Boys podcast is, it's a podcast where we take one of our favorite bands, musicians, one of our favorite artists, and we pick 10 of their wildest craziest most absurd most insane lyrics and we talk about those lyrics we're not we're not analyzing those lyrics in in, in a way that would make you very impressed with our, our brain power we are we using have no those brain lyrics, power no brain power instead we use those lyrics as a jumping off point for jokes and stories and and whatever and hey despite the comedy and fun you're promised to have on this podcast you still might learn something okay so that, that is on the table. Learning is possible, okay? Not probable. Possible, not probable. So, this episode, we're diving deep into the lyrics of LCD Sound System. Andrew, are, are you a big LCD Sound System fan? Yeah, I like LCD Sound System. And it when I listen to them, it's weird because I'm like... Usually, uh, like, electronic music really isn't my jam, but there's something about the rawness of the is electronic s- sound, which I know it almost sounds like an oxymoron, but, yeah. like, real drums a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and also, like, real instruments a lot of times, not just electronic. Like, he has, like, guitar and bass, and yeah. his vocals are awesome, and... Um, yeah, so it's not like electronic music in the sense that it's like always like manufactured sounding. It, mm-hmm. it does. It still very much sounds like a yeah. man playing an instrument, mm-hmm. even if that instrument is a synthesizer. Yeah. So LCD Sound System is is one of my favorite bands. Um, they are a seminal indie electronic rock band, right? Like they are one of the most famous bands of indie rock, right? So when we say they, it's really one person yeah so you know what i'll i'll, I'll do, give i'll give the lovely viewers and, and listeners at home and you andrew a little dive into the history into the backstory please please i want to know the history system. i actually just found out um today mm-hmm. that uh, their second album is just one song oh well so that is a uh, well I'll, I'll talk about Keep that go, okay go, i'll talk go, about go, that go before ahead, I, go ahead go ahead yeah. so lcd sound system First of all, we got to start with the Wikipedia genre descriptions. Our favorite site. Our favorite thing. Wikipedia describes LCD Sound System as dance punk, electronic rock, electronica, indie rock, art rock, and alternative dance, which are honestly all the majors I tried out in college. Am I right? Alternative, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Zing. Zing! There we go, ladies and gentlemen. You've signed up for a comedy podcast, and Lucian has delivered the goods. He has knocked it right out of the park, ladies and gentlemen. Lucian Flores will be here all night. If you want more, please talk to my representatives. I don't do birthday parties, okay? So, <laughs> City Sound System was formed in 2002 in Brooklyn, New York. Heard of so, it? Heard of it? Exactly. I was just about to say that. So, yeah, LCD Sound System is is basically built by and around James Murphy. So James Murphy was this dude who, and he still is, he's still alive, so he's not just was a dude, but he's a co-founder of DFA Records, Death From Above Records. He, he was a DJ. He was just like in the music scene for lots and lots of years. And then in 2002 started this band. There's a few other members that are like, have been there since the beginning, Nancy Wang and Pat Mahoney. And so I know they're very important and people know them very well, but like James Murphy is is the most famous member. He's the chief songwriter. He's the lyricist. He, I didn't, I learned this recently that 
many of LCD Sound System songs are just him recording all the instruments. I didn't realize that. So like mm-hmm. all my friends and I Can Change, which are like amazing songs, are just him. Kind of like uh, yeah. you know, Tame like Impala with that. Kevin Parker and, and yeah. other folks as well. <laughs> so yeah. I, 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 I just didn't realize that. So yeah, so LCD Sound System's first single was Losing My Edge in 2002, which is a hilarious first single because that song is about like being someone who you were really cool in the music scene and then now all the kids are passing you by, but you're like laying claim to like all the cool bands you knew about before other people knew it. So that's just like, it already has like middle-aged bitter man vibes and that's amazing as a first single. So first single, 2002, first album, their self-titled album released in 2005 and that is a double album. Next year, 2006, they released... I don't know if you want to call it an album or just like a side project or an EP, but it's called 4533. And it's one long song that was made in collaboration with Nike to be like over the length of a, of a workout. With who? It's Nike. Oh, the Nike. Shoe company. And it's, it's one long instrumental song. And then in 2007, they released their second album, Sound of Silver, which has... Is he saying that they are, the ideal workout is exactly 45 minutes and 33 seconds, not one second longer, not one second shorter? Maybe it's for a nice long run. Yeah. I mean, who's doing 45 minute, 32 second workouts? Those people are chumps. And if you're doing 45, 34, then you're just a try hard. You know, 45, 33 is the sweet spot for workouts. Hell yeah. 45, okay? 33. I hit it. All so Sound time. of Silver comes out in 2007 and that's got their biggest song, All My Friends. And that song, like, it was Pitchfork's number two song of the 2000s. It was Rolling Stone's 41st best song of the 2000s. It's just a really big song. Uh, my favorite song on that album is probably Someone Great. And it's just great. The album's great. Is that your favorite album that you said? or No. Because that's my favorite of theirs. I, I would say it's probably their universally most acclaimed album. I think all their albums are great and they they all their albums like have acclaim, but I think that one's probably the one that would be the first album I'd show to anyone trying to learn about the band. But yeah, there's a couple a, get innocuous, all my friends, North American scum and New York. I love you bringing me down all on that album and sound of silver. Yeah. Yeah. Good album. <laughs> so yeah. 2010, they released this is happening and that is my favorite album. I fucking love I realized that four of my lyrics are from This Is Happening, so clearly I love that album. That's kind of, that's the album that really got me into them. You know, I knew of them before. This was released like right before college started for me. So it's like when you're going into college and you're like, oh man, look at this new band that I know of, Mm. or like the seminal indie rock band that I'm starting to learn more of and you feel Mm -hmm. cool. Then the year later, they're like, we're gonna break up because we don't believe that like we can make, we wanna end on a high note. So, they did a week of shows at Terminal 5, which is a music venue in New York, and then they did a farewell gigantic show at MSG, Madison Square Garden. I hate Terminal 5. Have you been to Terminal 5? Yeah, I, I, I like Terminal 5. There's a lot of good memories associated with that place. Yes, that, like, there, I've seen there so are many good, good shows. Memories. I have, but it's not but a great it's just, venue. It's so out of the way from the subway and from like, it, yeah, the it's a weird place. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so yeah. LC Sound System broke up and they released a documentary about it and they're like, we want to break up on a high note. And then basically four years later, five years later, James Murphy's like, you know what? Fuck. I re- I'm like singing all these songs to myself. I really regret making such a big deal about breaking up and like making all these statements like we want to end on a high note. And he's like, I could make an album by myself, but I really want these people on the album, <laughs> like this band member. So then it... Then he's like, that's stupid if I do a solo album with all the same people. So, like, it's a fucking LCD Sound System record. So, they released, uh, he released the song, or they released a song, Christmas Will Break Your Heart, in December of 2015. And I remember when that came out, being like, it's a Christmas miracle, a nice, slow moving, depressive song about Christmas. <laughs> and then in 2017, they released their fourth album, American Dream, which won them their first Grammy with the song Tonight for Best Dance Recording. And at this point, I finally saw them as a band. So I was very grateful when they came back because I it meant I got to see them at Brooklyn Steel, which is a very cool venue, which is like a better Terminal 5, I'd say. And that was just so cool because I never thought I would ever see them. You know, I thought they were mm. done. So mm-hmm. it was like, 
that is very cool. You know, that bands I, I, do that. There have been a number of bands in my life that were just like, we're breaking up. And then like three years later, they were back together. Did those bands make a huge deal about breaking up though? Because some bands like quietly yes. break up. Okay. Yes. There was this band called Streetlight Manifesto, or there is this band called Streetlight Manifesto, and they are like a ska mm-hmm. punk. They're awesome. And they made a huge deal. They did a show. They did like a final farewell show mm-hmm. at PlayStation Theater, which at the time was Best Buy Theater. And uh, it was Tensler. like, I remember like, it was, or they did like a farewell tour. They called it a farewell tour. And I saw the, the Best Buy Theater show. But uh, it was like a big fucking deal. And literally like two and a half years later, they were like, here's our new album. And everyone's was like, what? Mm-hmm. So much for that. And the new album was great. I'm still waiting for the White Stripes to come back, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't see that. Um, anyway, some yeah. some last fun facts about LC- LCD sound system. So James Murphy also has produced records. So he produced Reflector by Arcade Fire, which we talked about a couple mm, episodes that makes ago. Sense. I see it. Yeah. I see it. It's, yeah. Vibe. There's a vibe there. Mm-hmm. And um, he he's done a lot of interesting things. Like he remixed some algorithmic data from the US Open about like serves and lobs and whatever and created that into music. He's had this dream to make like the subway have music like um, turnstiles mm. in the subway. He wanted them to have specific like rhythms and sounds that when you go there a turnstile, it like creates music. He's also, he has a That'd wine be awesome. bar. Yeah, this is the, basically he wants to do it. And the subway, the MTH just be like, this is not gonna happen. And then he has a wine bar in Brooklyn in Williamsburg called the Four Horsemen. And oh, cool. I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. To, a couple more fun facts. My introduction to the band, I was trying to think of when I first heard them, and I think it's probably Daft Punk is playing at my house. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I probably heard it on the soundtrack of FIFA 06 or Burnout Revenge, because that's I see it was on the soundtrack oh. of both. So that could be the first time I heard them. That's not, I like that song a lot. It's just not my favorite song of theirs. So I think it took a little while for me to actually mm-hmm. dig into them forever. And here's the biggest fun fact about James Murphy. James Come Murphy, up, he's 22 years old, so 10 years before his first single, right? Mm-hmm. Drops out of NYU, is an English major there, and he's talking to uh, the producers of the Gary Shandling show, So, who's a comedian. I don't know how James Murphy at 22 is talking to the producers of this show. And basically, they he was like talking to them about potentially like other writing jobs and stuff, and they sent him some scripts. And... James Murphy's like, I don't want to write. I want to be a musician. Stop sending me scripts. And then they're like, okay, well, do you want to be a writer on this new TV show? Stop sending me scripts. Imagine having a huge comedian send you scripts and you're just like, please. I don't want to do this. I'm 22. Okay, enough. That is wild. Yeah. Well, this story gets crazier. So they're like, okay, there's this new sitcom coming out. Like, here's the pilot. Do you want to be a staff writer on the show? And he's like, I don't want to do it. The show ended up being Seinfeld. Holy shit. <laughs> so he basically turned down, at 22 years old, turned down a job writing on Seinfeld. 22, that doesn't make sense. Seinfeld was 89 and he was born in, that would he would have been 19. Okay. All right. I'm punching holes all in your story. No, Whatever. I'm just, saying, I'm just Take it up with The Guardian in this great interview with James Murphy. Okay. So <laughs> whatever. At a very early 20s, James Murphy was offered a job on Seinfeld and he turned that it down. That is so fucking crazy, man. And then, you know, was underground for a while and then finally had success a little bit later in life than other musicians. Still young, but just yeah. compared to other why, bands that started as like teens. Why did people reach out to some 20-year-old kid from NYU to write for uh, Seinfeld? That I don't know. I have no idea <laughs> what his life was like. <laughs> because like also the head writers of that, especially at the time, but even continuing through the show, were like old, not old, but friends of like comedian friends of Jerry and Larry David who like did the comedy circuit with them, like Fred Stoller and Carol Liefer and like all these huge comedians from like the seventies. So that's fucking weird. The seventies and eighties. So that's so fucking weird that they would do that. There's this guardian article <laughs> that uh, it's, it's good. It's, you could look up James Murphy, guardian Seinfeld, whatever. And it's just like talking about how he felt like a failure at so many different periods in his life. And like felt like a slow rise, like a late bloomer and stuff. So wow, interesting. That is mentioned in that article as a huh. as a thing to him. You know, that's hard to move on from, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it clearly worked out for him. You know, it's worked out fucking amazingly for him. So 
pretty good yeah and yeah it worked out for us too i'd rather he be this musician that releases dope music versus just another writer on seinfeld that i wouldn't have known i'm a seinfeld stan yeah anyway so yeah that that is a lcd sound system andrew are you content with that intro i'm never quite content with anything that you say but okay. uh, it'll have to do because your tiny brain is incapable of coming up with anything else, as is mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. So listen, <laughs> listen, 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 people at home. We got a message on the Instagram the other day from a 17-year-old listener in Sweden, which is, I love it when we have listeners not of our generation and from different countries Blows my mind. This is this is clear how we are just influencing the youth. Mm. So if you want us to indoctrinate the youth and like subliminally like get them to buy specific products or vote for specific parties, like we have that power. We have that power to brainwash the youth, and that's really impressive. Mm-hmm. And this dude basically uh, said that you asked a question about how do you know when something in life is the best? And then he wrote us a really long answer, basically being like, here's my thoughts on that. And I was like, yes, I love it when the Lyric Boys... Yeah, we got to pose more philosophical questions so that people, people, you can message us, we will answer you because uh, we love to hear from our content hounds. Yeah, and then he mentioned some bands that we should do and The Strokes was on that list and I definitely know we're doing them at some point this year for for sure. sure. So. Listen, message us, and and we might do that band earlier because now we know that someone wants it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. If yeah. you have requests, we take requests. We are open-minded folks. Mm-hmm. And so we're on social media at The Lyric Boys, and also just at this point, subscribe to the podcast if you listen to it. It, it makes us happy. It makes us uh, it gives us a reason to get out of bed in the morning. I like the way you said that. You're basically just like, listen. Don't be a fucking dick, all right? If you're going to listen to the podcast, hit subscribe, all right? You fucking asshole. I'm talking to you, okay? What's the matter, you? Why are you not subscribed (laughs) to the podcast? Why you make make my mom cry by not subscribing (laughs) to the podcast? Come on. My mom, she make it the sauce. She can't make it a sauce no more because you make her cry. The tears that go into the sauce and make her too salty. So listen, don't make our mamas cry. (laughs) Subscribe to the Lyric Boys podcast. And without further ado, do you want to hear my first LCD Sound System lyric? I guess I do. I love your enthusiasm. It's really (laughs) contagious. Yes. Please tell me your first uh, lyric. My first lyric comes from the song Pow Pow off the album This Is Happening. As do my next three lyrics after this. Nice. (laughs) So the lyric is... On this occasion, there are a couple things that we know that we pulled from Fact Magazine. One, the king wears a king hat and lives in the king house. Two, your time will come, but tonight is our night, so you should give us all of your drugs. Three, we have a black president, and you do not, so shut up, because you don't know shit about where I'm from that you didn't get from TV. Wow. There's the lyric. This, I'm immediately picturing... A 19-year-old study abroad student Uh (laughs) in another country who is absolutely fucking wasted out of his Uh mind. Uh And he's in, like, Germany. Uh And he's like... And they're they're like, sir, I can't do a German accent. But they're basically like, sir, you cannot come into this club. You are too drunk. And he's like, here's a couple of things that you should know. Okay, number one, the king... What do you fucking have a... You have a monarchy here. King lives in a house. He has a... What are you? You're the king. You have a king hat. Number two, your time will come. But tonight is our night. Number three, Obama is president. Okay, I can do what I want. Yeah, it is. It definitely has the vibe of drunk person. Drunk person <laughs> in a country with a monarchy who's being shit on a little bit for America and is like, "Fuck you! You have a king in a king house, okay, with a king hat." And we have a black president, so nothing you say can hurt us. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I uh, you also, know, I, I sympathize with that sentiment a little bit because it's mm-hmm. like sometimes you go to these monarchy countries and you're just like, what the fuck am I supposed you to do? You know, these are here? monarchy countries. These monarchy countries are like, what is this, the 1700s? Get a fucking president already. God, <laughs> Jesus. I felt that way about the UK uh, before, before I started abroad in the UK. I heard of it. 
I was like, why the fuck do these people have a monarch? <laughs> like, what are they getting out of this? What are they getting out of a House of Lords? Okay. I still don't know. And I have no fucking clue who any of the royal family is. I've hear I hear rumblings of Prince Harry, and I think Andrew is one of a name of the another one. Andrew's like I have, Well, two is things. He, is he one, another prince? I think it's uh Harry and Prince I know more Harry. about the Kardashians <laughs> than I do about the royal family. Anyway, so what I want to say is that I've always been like, what's the point of the monarchy? And then when I was in the UK, I was like, okay, the people here, like a, a lot of these people seem to actually like the monarchy. And like, there is like the sense of like civic pride and whatnot. And we like, will okay. die for our country and kingdom in it. And I'm like, okay, let's let the monarchy survive. And then the minute I leave the UK, I'm like, once again, what the fuck was the point of this monarchy? <laughs> and then people are like, it's the royal wedding. It's the royal, it's the queen's jubilee. It's the diamond jubilee. And I'm just like, this is nuts. This is madness. This is <laughs> madness that these two people are getting married and the whole country is like, yes, little baby, you guys are going to make little future kings, which is weird in its own self. Yeah, so, well, it's sort of like you go into like uh, somebody's house and they have like a decoration or a little tchotchke up, right? And you're just like, oh, and yeah. they tell you like the story of like, oh, I bought this. Isn't it beautiful? And you're like, what? I get what does this add <laughs> to your house at all? It adds nothing. So like Prince, this wreath on your door does not welcome me any more than normal. So Prince William and Prince Harry are like the two famous princes, right? A William, and then okay. Prince Charles is like next in line for the crown, and he's old, but like Queen Elizabeth is very old. Prince Andrew is the one who's in controversy for potentially being a pedophile. <laughs> so that's funny that he's the one that. Oh wow! You know how many fucking princes are there? She There's had a lot all of princes, these princes. Okay, who she have these kids with? Is she married? Um, is she just banging is who dudes married? in Britain? The Queen. Is, yes, the Queen is married. Oh. I have no, I really am so ignorant on, on the royal family. I got to say. It's fine. It's fine. The royal family is in trouble right now anyway. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Are they canceled? Did we cancel the royal family? Did you miss this big cultural moment of the two hour Oprah interview with Meghan Markle? No, I know that Prince that Harry? was a thing, but why? Why was that a thing? Because they left the royal family. It was a big deal. They just they cut left ties. the royal family. They cut ties with the royal family. What, was he? Prince he's a Harry prince. no longer talks to his brother. And basically, they're saying the royal family just like disowned them, and 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 because Meghan Markle is black, and basically they just were like, "What's going to happen? Who's what's going to happen with that kid?" And whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa! The royal family did not approve of an interracial marriage. Is that is that actually what you're saying? Basically, that is what. Um, yeah, boils down to that. Basically, like Meghan Markle felt <sighs> excluded, and Prince Harry felt excluded, and they all just felt like the family. Not necessarily the queen, apparently, but I didn't, I didn't watch the interview yet, but I need to catch up on it. That is super nuts, man. I had no idea that there was like racial tensions in the royal family. I got to say. <laughs> what do you got to say? Tell me. Based on that, what's this transition going to be? Well, th- wow. No, crazy about- that the royal family is still a little bit racist. So I got to say. No, no, no. It's about that. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, given that we're talking about how the royal family is this relic from like the 1700s and it still mm-hmm. feels very fucking ancient and archaic mm-hmm. does it surprise people no. that there is some racism there no it does not it shouldn't really it should be like oh yeah these people who act like it's still fucking shakespearean times harbor racist thoughts towards black people yeah i guess they do that, I'm not condoning it. Obviously, that's bad. But like, now that I think about it, I'm like, huh. I wonder why this didn't even come out before. Because it definitely, they always have. Yeah. That's what James Murphy's talking about here. The fucking king in his king hat. We don't need that. Another favorite part about this lyric, though, is your time will come, but tonight is our night. So you should give us all of your drugs. It's hilarious to me. It's like you see like you're at a bar. It's your birthday. And you see like these other people doing shots. You're like, shut up. It's my fucking birthday. Your night's going to come. But give me those shots now. And you're just like, okay, that's a compelling argument, man. Take my shots. Right. <laughs> like, oh, my God. There there definitely have been times where like you see the drunk person uh, getting a little entitled maybe mm-hmm. throughout the night just being like especially on their birthday, like a drunk birthday celebration. 
and they're just like it's fuck especially like a white girl drunk birthday celebration where it's just like it's my fucking birthday okay it's like uh, when a terrible news event happens on your birthday you're like how could they fucking assassinate this person on my birthday couldn't they wait until tomorrow now everyone's sad <laughs> yeah. this is anyway that's my first lyric we're done with number one what's what's your first lyric andrew my first lyric is appropriately enough from the very first LCD sound system song ever called Losing My Edge. Damn. <laughs> the lyric is, <laughs> I heard you have a compilation of every good song ever done by anybody. Every great song by the Beach Boys, all the underground hits, all the Modern Lovers tracks. I heard you have a vinyl of every Niagara record on German import. I heard that you have a white label of every seminal Detroit techno hit, 1985, 86, 87. I heard that you have a CD compila compilation of every good 60s cut and another box set from the 70s. I hear you're buying a synthesizer and an arpeggiator and are throwing your computer out the window because you want to make something real. The fact that these are lyrics is hilarious to me because there's like no, like if you don't know this song, yeah. what I just said, you there's no fucking way to know how that goes in the song. Oh yeah, that's I, I do like so, James Murphy. Well, we'll get into this later, but he for some reason he doesn't have a reputation for being a great lyricist or like people sometimes think their lyrics are a little clunky, but I fucking love his lyrics. And I think we've done so many bands over the course of this who have worse lyrics that mm. LC, James Murphy's lyrics are good. Okay. I think they're good. <laughs> I think this song is so funny. It, 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 it embodies is. that spirit of well, just it's relatable. Like, it embodies it. It's both him being, I know better than these people, but also making fun of that. And I yes. feel this way too. Yeah. There's times where I'm like, Oh no, all these kids know more music than I do. Or like, they're talking about this band and I don't even know. Yeah. And then you feel old. But and then you're like, fucking, I got all these original Beatles records on vinyl. Like, fuck you. Well, what I love about this is that he is a, he, James Murphy, like through the grapevine heard that this other person has a compilation of every good song ever done by anybody. And I just love yeah. the idea that that exists and that it's like verified. And it's like, oh, you like music? Well, I have every song that's good. Yeah. It's like it's what a baby might say. Like It's literally like that teacher. meme that's like, oh, you like music? Then name every song. <laughs> name every good song. Uh, I feel like I've definitely wanted to say, every time I read a, rev a bad review mm -hmm. of an album that I like, I'm just, I want to go to the author and just be like, listen, bro. What do you got every fucking good song ever yeah. made, huh? You know, you know, but I don't know. Who are you? There's so there's a, a so this song name drops a ton of things. And James Murphy like places himself in the history of these bands, right? Like he'll be yeah. like, he was at the first concert that this band ever performed. He was at the first practice that this band ever had. So he's like the injecting first himself. He's injecting himself in music history and music lore yeah. as if like he matters. And then as if the song matters. ends with just a list of like big kind of like underground because none of these some of these bands are huge. Right. But some some of these are a little bit like of that era, like slightly lesser known than say like the obvious radio bands of that time. Like the Beach Boys. Well, it's the Peach Boys, first of all. Not even oh. the Beach Boys. So yeah. So, like Joy Division's mentioned in this and they're like bigger. But like Anyway, there's a, and the song ends with him just listing bands and then it goes the Sonics yeah. over and over again. So there's a Spotify playlist out there. That's every band mentioned on LCD sound systems, losing my edge. I'm sure Apple music has it too. I've like, that's very funny. Yeah. I think those are great. It's like, there's so many, this, this is the most name dropped song I've ever heard in my life. And I love it for that reason. Yeah. And the, you know, there is something interesting about, um, like name dropping artists and like identifying with like, mm -hmm. well, I listen to this, so I must have more taste than you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I think it's funny. I also, f I feel like he's mocking that a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I also feel like there's like a serious element to it where it's just like, well, maybe I do. And I, I think we've all had that. Like I've definitely had that mm -hmm. thought. I, I know that. And I don't like having that thought, but yeah. I know that like, it's easy to just be like, dude, have, are you fucking listening? Do you have ears? Are you listening to this right now? This is so much better than anything you listen to. And it's just like, you have to take a step back from that and be like, wow, 
What a fucking dickish thing to say. I do think James Murphy is like um, self-deprecating here. I'm sure he believes that he used to be like that in the past. I think yeah. he recognized, like he's 32 when the song came out. He probably okay. yeah. got over that. But there's so many bands in this song that I'm just like, I have no idea who they are. And if, if I were cooler, I would know all of them. It's mm-hmm. definitely a song. That, yeah. And then you like, over the course of your life, start to know more of these bands. You're like, oh, I know this band now. I heard them. And then you're like, still don't know more than half of them. Yeah, I don't know who the Peach Boys are. I would love to do a song of this that's like the songs, the bands and songs that be, are meaningful to me. It'd just be like Like my make version. a song that mm-hmm. is, yeah. You're like... Mine's changed. You know, over the years, mine has changed so much. Like, sometimes I'll mm-hmm. go back to albums that I listened to in high school, and yeah. I'll be like, oh, I never stopped listening to this. This is great. And sometimes I'll go back and be like, god damn, I haven't listened to this since 2007, yeah. and boy, does it suck. Yeah, that happens to me, too. Like, yeah, of course. You listen to some bands, you're like, I used to like this so much, and then you're like, you know what? This isn't that good. And, yeah, but... I would love a sequel to Losing My Edge. I would love a self-aware, even more meta sequel where James Murphy name drops LCD Sound System within Losing My Edge 2. Okay? (laughs) That's what I want. You heard him, James Murphy. You heard me. So my second lyric comes from the song Drunk Girls, once again off of This Is Happening. Nice. And the lyric is, drunk girls, drunk girls know that love is an astronaut. It comes back, but it's never the same. What, which I that always sounds loved. like it's it's it makes you think at first like is that profound and yes. then I feel like you think for a second you're like I don't know is yeah. it profound that's exactly <laughs> how I feel about this lyric because I'm like damn love is an astronaut it comes back but it's never the same damn and then I'm like wait what happened to that astronaut yeah like what does that actually <laughs> <laughs> mean the astronaut came back and he's like I saw some fucking Martian shit dude I saw this Martian murder another Martian and then like have sex with its dead body i'm not the same right now that was yeah. fucked up dude well it is like you're like oh man love is an astronaut damn and then astronauts yeah that's such a high the, thought yeah exactly that's what that's, that's why i feel like when you hear this song you're just like whoa you're just like, man love yeah, is like, an astronaut oh, love oh, is an astronaut dude think about it okay Oh, yes, man, I know, I know, I know. I've been saying it all my life. <laughs> yeah, yes, okay, astronauts do come back, and they are never the same. I buy that. I feel like when you come back from space alone for like a year, circling whatever you do, just chilling on the International Space Station, whatever astronauts do, you know, astronaut stuff. Mm-hmm. You come down, and you're just like, this Earth man. It's yeah, I feel so like boring. when you see your shit floating in space, I mean, your literal shit, floating in space after shitting yes that uh changes a man yeah not you know seeing the sunrise from outer space as the sun rises over the planet that you live in that you somehow see from a new perspective that is chill but seeing that shit fly around space (laughs) that that will give you please i can google image the sun rising in space okay i could never experience shit floating around me yeah what is also funny about the song is just how many times it says drunk girls the song is he tends to far... do that <laughs> yeah with a lot not of the with songs, the drunk he girls but he, he does repeat yeah. lyrics yeah yeah but there's a lot of drunk girls but it's there's a catchy a song of... give me your but why second. but also oh. why do why do drunk girls girls know that love is an astronaut it comes back but that's another back. reason i'm like this is profound or is it i don't know like why is a drunk like people it would be interesting to say like People who have fallen in and out of love know that love is an astronaut, right? But he specifically says drunk girls. Drunk girls have the clarity to understand that love is an astronaut, Andrew. Okay? It's like a superpower. (laughs) Can I tell you something I once overheard a a drunk woman say that has stayed with me for the rest of my life? Yes, please. I would like nothing better. It was such a profound statement. Okay? Okay. I was walking by... uh, This was at like a... Is that a party the in, in on the Lower East Side at like um not like quite a house party, it was like a soft opening for so I don't even know. It was just like a big party. Wow, you sound um, important. 
Yeah, I kind of want to take going to a soft opening on so the much. Side. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's just, let's uh, <laughs> no, no, keep going. Let's keep kill going. me, right? Keep going. Let's kill me. I'm normally not okay. Fuck. So I hate, what? Did I this hate everything girl, about myself right now. What okay. did this drunk girl say? So I was walking by the the woman's bathroom, and there was a long line. I may have just come out of the men's room. I may have just been walking by. Got things to do. Got places to be. I don't remember. And I heard this woman go. I love whiskey. It makes me feel like I could do anything a man can do. Hell yeah, fight the patriarchy. And I was Let me like, tell you something, girl. You can do anything a man can do. Well, that so that statement was like, wow. That is there's like that is a very meaningful statement with so much to unpack. We're not going to do that. You can unpack that at home, but that <laughs> just hearing that, I was like, holy crap. I was just privy to like a really like a, a big thought. You and just had your privilege checked. Yeah, I was like, damn. I hate whiskey, so I'm glad I don't need it to feel like a man. <laughs> All I have to feel like a man is this heaping cock between my legs. Yep. <laughs> and when you drink whiskey, that gives you the confidence to say something like that and not feel like a dummy. <laughs> wow. I'm not even drinking whiskey. I'm drinking Bud Light lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me your second lyric. My second lyric is from the song New York, I Love You, But You're Bringing Me Down off the album Sound of Silver. And the lyric is, Your mild billionaire mayor's now convinced he's a king. So the boring collect, I mean all disrespect, in the neighborhood bars, I'd once dreamt I would drink. What a vibe this is of just mm-hmm. like feeling like I think everybody who has spent a considerable amount of time in New York probably has some sort of love hate where you're just like, yeah, there are moments where like, obviously you're like, I love this. I love this. But then there are moments where you're just like, man, why does anybody live here? And I know I've experienced that sometimes. Yeah. Where I'm just like, man, why does anybody even... Why are there 8 million fucking people here? That's crazy. Uh, but like your billionaire mayor, your mild billionaire mayor is now convinced he's a king. Whew. So this is during Bloomberg. Just ma- uh, Mayor Michael Bloomberg. At the, but also like it could apply know. to any New York mayor. I mean, de Blasio, I don't know if he's... He's not a billionaire, but like... It I'm just saying it was like a hundred percent. Oh, a hundred. Like it was written Bloomberg, during yeah. Bloomberg. Yeah. Like it's just in the way that our president is black refers to Barack Obama versus Donald Trump or Joseph Biden, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this definitely is hits hard for Bloomberg, uh, mm-hmm. and also he's just like boring people in your bars, and uh, I mean all disrespect. The fact that he highlights mm-hmm. that is so funny to me too, where he's just like, listen. Don't interpret this as like anything other than me just absolutely taking a heaping dump on yeah. everything you like right now. I kind of respect someone going like, I mean all disrespect, but you fucking suck. Versus yeah. like, I mean no disrespect, but get a new life. Right. You're sad yeah. and you make me sad. Yeah, own it. If you're going to say something that's like you think is going to offend somebody, don't say no offense. Just be like, I mean to offend <laughs> you right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Offense. Yeah, um, I love it's, it. It's, it's such a, a vibe. It's it's a great vibe. I love this music video too because it's uh, Kermit the Frog depressed walking around New York City singing the song, and then at the end, Kermit the Frog is revealed to be being puppeted by James Murphy. Wow! Wow! Ba 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 Uh, yeah. Have you had? moments like that i mean you grew up in manhattan i didn't grow up in manhattan so like i don't have you had moments where there there are times where you're just like man i don't know about this place yes for sure <laughs> yeah i mean 100 percent. like um i mean yeah there are times there are times when i think about it i'm like you know i'm sure i could live in any city and be fine and have yeah. friends and like love life and have a good time like I'm sure that's true as yeah. well, but um, yeah, I mean, New York City can be a uh, can be a lot sometimes, but I, I've always enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, it has a lot of things to offer. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's New York City. Dollar pizza. But yeah, the, there are times a... where I'm just like, it would. It, sometimes it would just feel nice to like live on a ranch with lots of land where I can just like run around and have like. Are you like the s- cattle in the situation? No, it would be you're so, just running. Yeah, you're just, like that. It'd be so fun getting to like shepherded by sheep dogs. Have a ranch with like ten friends, right? And you all live on a ranch, and you're all just like, bro, it's fucking ranch life, dude. Hell I guarantee yeah. you, if you were in this situation, <laughs> hey, like you would hate it. You would have to do all this work, and you'd be like so tired of all your friends, and you people yeah. would be like, well, why didn't you shovel the shit? You're like, I'm tired of shoveling the shit. I'm tired. Okay? I know. I'd be so if two days in. I'd be like, fuck these people. I get me out of here. You're like, okay, the ranch is being attacked by coyotes, and we just have dead animals everywhere. It's your and job I'd be to like, clean I'd probably up. be like, good, let it fucking attack. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> My third LCD sound system lyric comes once again from this is happening. From the song I Can Change, which I remember the song came out and I was listening to it as a freshman in college being like, what a cool new song. And now it's fucking over 10 years old and it blows my mind because that just makes me feel old. (laughs) So anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The lyric is, love is an open book to a verse of your bad poetry, and this is coming from me. So <laughs> I love that. It's wow, enjoyable. It's, self, it's mean to be like, it's an open book of your bad poetry, but it's also funny to recognize that, like, and that's coming from me. And so, like, I know bad poetry. <laughs> I'm a yeah. writer of bad poetry. Yeah. So... This is, yeah. So James Murphy, LCD Sound System, I feel like they, there sometimes is this reputation that they aren't great. He is not a great lyricist, but I, once again, like I said, I think I'm, I jive hard with his lyrics. I think his lyrics are funny. I think they're pointing at times. I think, I think he just got a really fun way of describing things. Like his songs can be poignant and humorous at the same time. And I think a really impressive way. And I think that maybe the interpretation of the bad lyrics is not it's not necessarily because the lyrics are bad because there's nothing that I'm reading here that I'm like oh that's a dumb lyric it's just they're very very like straight up and to the point like he's just mm-hmm. like like he says I mean all disrespect yeah you're mild billionaire mayor fuck him <laughs> you know I think there's just like a sense of playfulness to them in yeah. a way that's almost unexpected <laughs> so, or so that way like it's attacked people by surprise but I love this the idea that love is an open book to a, a bad verse of poetry is so funny to me. It's relatable. You know, we've all like said things or written things or like have been like uh, gooey and like whatever in relationships. And that is just so funny to be just like calling all of that as like bad poetry. And Imagine- I think that is great. It, it's like people who are vulnerable putting themselves out there. Well, I'm also but, imagining yeah. him breaking up with a girl and the girl's like, why? I don't understand. I thought we were good. And he's just like, have you read your fucking poetry lately? <laughs> God, I can't sit here through it. I don't care yeah. how compatible we are. I don't care how beautiful and smart and perfect. I don't care that Match.com says we are a 10 out of 10 for a match. Your poetry is making my brain hurt. <laughs> so you wrote me a love poem and it's not even iambic pantermin or girl you gotta work for me okay <laughs> you gotta fucking work for this piece of hot ass you wrote a poem that's not an a b style of rhyming okay did you even take english 101 god uh, i'm sorry i only accept haikus so get out of here with that shit <laughs> so yeah no I, I just it's just so fun it's like a for it to both be like to boiling down love as like awful love notes that are poorly written between people mm. is great. And then to be self-deprecating and be like, and that's coming from me. I'm not a good writer and I'm saying these notes are awful. It just, there's so much fun in that. I really fucking enjoy that. Like, I really think that is so fun and enjoyable. <laughs> I'll say it again. And then, so I pulled some YouTube comments from this. So let's, 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 <laughs> there's a lot of these YouTube comments that we, that we see on songs that are, this one goes, the good old days makes me cry considering how shit my life has turned. Ouch. Those Ooh. always make me really Ooh. sad. When I see those on YouTube, I'm just like, oh man, like, Oof. I hope you're okay. Like, goddamn. 
Here's a better one. So I pl- will also sad in the end. You're bringing down the content hounds. So I played this song at the jukebox at the bowling alley. I played it for a month or so, and then it gets taken off of touch tunes. Why? I want to play this when I bowl. It's my jam. I gotta say, touch Enjoy. tunes, get this fucking song back touch on. Tunes. You heard the man. Lucian is making a lot of demands this episode, okay? And you're all privy to him. Fucking do it. Uh... I like the idea that this guy is in a bowling league, like a professional touring yeah. bowling league. And he's like, I, I will not. He's like in his dressing room. <laughs> he's like, first of all, I require a dressing room at the bowling alley. Okay. Mm-hmm. Second of all, green M&Ms, get them out of my fucking bowl. Third, play this song while I bowl every time I'm up. Otherwise, you can kiss your second place, your second best player. Goodbye. I like the idea that this person had a rhythm going, though, and was, like, doing so well. Get in tons of turkeys. And if you don't know what a turkey is, that's when you get three strikes in a row. So, so this guy's getting all these turkeys and then not getting a strike because they're only turkeys if it's three, right? And then, like, the next day he goes to the bowling alley and is, like, feeling a jive. And the song isn't there. And they're just awful. No turkeys. You know, they're just fucking worst game of their life. He's like, listen, when I trained, when I had that 80s montage training session when I was becoming a bowler, mm-hmm. the montage was set to this song. I cannot bowl without my montage song. How am I supposed to relive that montage moment if yeah. the song isn't playing in the reality? Another sad YouTube <laughs> It's like Rocky always fighting to yeah. Eye of the Tiger. Another YouTube comment is, this song, The Feels, makes me think. She wanted me to change who I am. Maybe this was for the best. I don't know. My heart is so sad. And this song makes it okay for a little. Thank you. You know what you should do on all of these sad YouTube comments is just comment, like reply to them. Be like www.betterhelp.com. <laughs> what is better help? It's the oh, is online the- therapy. <laughs> <laughs> that, like every podcast is sponsored by better help now i do want to be like i hope you're okay <laughs> like that's a vulnerable statement to make on a youtube co- video on a youtube video yeah well there's something so nice and and I, I love seeing moments of vulnerability and and honesty on the internet you know so many comments are on youtube videos are like blah blah blah, 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 blah who gives a shit right <laughs> and then it's someone being like the song touched me. It's profound. I smoked mm. a lot of hashish in the military back in the seventies, and, <laughs> and I'm like, yes, thank you. I love the doors comments. Those are all. Yeah. those were my favorite. When those are all out. hashish related. <laughs> <laughs> Just like if you look up, like I'm, I guarantee you, half of the uses of hashish on the internet are comments on the doors videos <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube. Anyway, you want to hear my third lyric? Give me your uh, third lyric. My third lyric is from the song North American Scum off of the album Sound of Silver. I have a lot of Sound of Silvers. We got their hits. Yeah. And the lyric is, we are North Americans. And for those of you who still think we're from England, we're not. No. We've been on planes and on trains till we think we might die. Far from North America. Where the buildings are old, and you might have lots of mimes. I love this. Like that is so funny. It's so funny, and <laughs> it just like it, it. just like the way it ends. Like it peters out too. It's like for those of you who still think we're from England, we're not. No, it's not even like we're not who from is England. He, who is and- he talking to there? <laughs> who is who? Also, like what? what I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused. Okay. Is there a situation where somebody goes up to him and he's and they're like, Murphy, you must be from uh, the United Kingdom, right? Ireland, England, maybe. He's like, let me explain something to you. I'm from North America and I'm proud. I think it's like the idea that they are an electronic influenced rock band at a time when maybe most of that music was European. Mm. So maybe that they were confused with like European bands for a while. I could totally see that. But see, I do love the idea that it's... walking through a country and just shouting out, we're North Americans, everybody. For those well, I... of you who think we're English, we are not. 
I do love that it's all of North America as one. How many songs do we have for like North America? Like, yeah. You know, like that's one thing that's also so enjoyable about this. It's not just like we're American scum. It's we're North American scum. You know, we got it's like Canada and Mexico in there. Exactly. It's like, and I love just like, not only is it very funny, he's like, I don't know. I don't, the way he also delivers that lyric is very much like he's like slurring. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, where to begin, right? Mm-hmm. And then, so this first thing is like, you think we're from England? We're not. And then he's like, we're going to Europe. And his description of Europe is it's that continent where <laughs> buildings are old and you have lots of mimes. It's like a child came back from Europe and they're like, what do you think? You're like, those buildings fucking crumbling and those crazy <laughs> white dudes with the with the striped shirts and the berets fucking trapped in boxes and no one would help them. <laughs> uh, you know, <clears throat> if I were to sum up France, <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like that's it. Buildings are old. You have lots of mimes. Get a crepe. Yeah. France is fine. I've been I've only been to Paris once. Uh, in Versailles, <laughs> it's fine. I feel wow. like that's what James Murphy is also trying to say, <laughs> where it's just like, yeah, exactly. It's like, what do you think about uh, France? Well, I don't know. It's older than where where we are, like the buildings. So I, I guess like that's cool. Your review of France and Paris is simply it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just like that is a classic. Like, ah, why leave Staten Island? Why leave Long <laughs> Island? Like. <laughs> Paris, it's fine, but I got everything I need right here. You know, what are you like gonna do? Food? Go get a fucking crepe. You got a crepe cafe down the street. Is what it you the baguette fucking... too big? Who can even hold some bread that big? I don't. I don't know. What do you go see the Mona Lisa? That shit's fucking tiny. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I have not been to 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 Paris enough to make that kind of decision. But I, uh, based on the three days I was there. What I would say is that I agree with James Murphy's take. The building's <laughs> old. Mimes, lots. It's undeniable that there are lots of mimes and older built Like, Europe, older buildings, lots of mimes. Great. Objective yeah. truth. Okay? No one has to beat around the bush and say those buildings aren't old and they don't have a lot of mimes. Great. I feel like Europe also is, like, very proud of the fact that their buildings are older than ours. Like, I remember... St- I also studied abroad in Spain. Buildings. Heard of it. España. Um, España. España. Uh, but like, yeah, people would... Like, I feel like I remember... I can't tell you specific references, but I feel like I remember people being like, look at this. Look at this fucking building. Look at this fucking... This is cool. It's fucking 1200. Cool. You like that I, shit? I, I, I and I'm like just like, shit. yeah, it's yes. cool. And like, what's your oldest building? 1930? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> I feel like Sp- Spanish people are always just like... Fuck off with your fucking early 1900s buildings. Look at this shit. It's from 1200. Yeah. It does blow my mind when you do go to places like that, though. It's really cool. I love it. I love it. It is cool. I will say that. that I do like that vibe. I just think it's funny that that's their, like, Mm -hmm. listen, I'm going to blow your fucking mind right now. So my last, my fourth lyric, but my last lyric from This Is Happening comes from the song Dance Yourself Clean. This song is a fucking jam. It just... Slow build up and then just euphoric, dancey ass ending. Nice. The lyric is talking like a jerk, except you are an actual jerk and living proof <laughs> that sometimes friends are mean. Again, this is, this is, it's right on, there is no like subtext. It's just right on the fucking nose. I love it. <laughs> You're I talking love- like a jerk, except I'm going to strip that simile metaphor away and tell you that it's 100% literal as it is. Well, it's because, you know, like there's some, there's some people that are like constantly put down people. And they're like, oh, I'm only joking. Like, I'm just being a jerk. Like, don't like, oh, Andrew, you're so stupid and, and dumb and, and tiny. And then it's like, oh, but I'm just I'm just being a jerk. And then you're like, yeah. Yeah, talking like a jerk, except you are an actual jerk. Yeah. Like if someone <laughs> said this to me when I was joking around, I try not to do that in general, right? Mm-hmm. But if I made a joke and someone responded this exact sentence to me, I'd be like, I've crossed the line and I'm an awful person and I would just like go sit in the corner. <laughs> that or I'd be like, what a matter? You have a problem with me? Hey, hey, am I making a scene here? <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, <talked about> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> Bro, did you see? Do uh, do you agree with her or with me? Am I the one making the scene or is she the one that's being so fucking uptight about it? <laughs> like, I don't know, you guys. Goodbye. And the way this is delivered in the song is also like very sad. And I just love the idea that someone's like, you're living proof that sometimes friends are mean. Because we, we have a lot of songs about like your friends being great. Yeah. Or like your your girl. But like it's nice to have a moment that's like sometimes friends are mean. If somebody told me that, if I was being a, like a making like jokes and stuff and someone was like, "Listen, I want to tell you something. You are living proof that sometimes friends are mean." I would be so hurt and I would be like, "I need to eva- re-eval- yeah. evaluate my actions immediately." Like that's so much more powerful than being like "fuck off, dick." <laughs> <laughs> it's the vulnerability that makes it right. Yeah, yeah, just being like you're somebody calling you mean. I feel like it, if you're not a toddler, if if like a twenty five year old person calls you mean, it's fucking daily. Fucking kick him in the nuts. But if a a twenty five year old person calls you mean, yeah, you ha- you have done something wrong. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, that's that's the healthier reaction versus the one that's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Which is also other reaction other people have. Yeah. Oh, dude, of course. Again, that's like, there's like a Long Island stereotype, right? Of a guy who's like, what's the matter? I'm just breaking your balls. What are you talking about? Don't be so fucking snowflake. You fucking snowflakes. It's like, God, you're just being a dick. It's not funny if nobody's laughing. Talk like talking like someone who's breaking my balls, except you are actually breaking my balls. <laughs> my balls. <laughs> The music video is a guy just like hammering some guy's nuts. Yeah. No, yeah. and living proof that sometimes friends are mean. Sometimes friends are mean. Very <laughs> sad. Very great vibe. Great talking <laughs> talking like you are stabbing me in the chest. Except you literally are stabbing me in my chest. Oh my god, please stop. I'm bleeding. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's always those like stereotypical guy kind of friendships that are just like essentially insulting each other constantly and there's like a line there right there's a, but there's and like, like a uh there's a difference between like a love insult and mm-hmm. like an, an insult that's like you're mean yeah well there's like when it's just like that's the the default that is a lot and gets annoying if it's like that's like one in a part of it it's fine yeah. But it's like if, if that's just the relationship that there's just like that's boring. That's annoying. Well, like when I told you right at the top of this, I was like, I don't care about what you have to say. I think I said something like that. Yeah. You didn't say I was being mean. <laughs> so well, that was I just gotta say the internet has living proof that sometimes friends are mean. So what what is on the internet? This this podcast, <laughs> the Lyric Boys wow. podcast. We're Heard on of the it? Internet. We're on the internet. We're on the World Wide Web. We are surfing. Did you ever think as a little kid in 1996 when you're four years old and your dad has the computer room, did you ever think you would be one day on that computer? First of all, I got to say, get fucking out of the patriarchy because my mom had the computer. Oh! (laughs) And secondly... Wow, I just got called out. Uh, all I remember is just playing Sports Illustrated for kids games on the computer, and I got to be like Michael Jordan in the 96 Bulls or something. I don't remember. You know what I played? I played a lot of putt-putt and putt-putt mini golf. Hell yeah. And where in the anyway, world was Carmen San Diego? Anyway, what is your uh, fourth? LCD My fourth sense? lyric is from the song Sound of Silver from the album Sound of Silver. Sound of Silver. And uh, the lyric is, Sound of Silver, talk to me. Makes you want to feel like a teenager. Until you remember the feelings of a real-life emotional teenager, and then you think again. Amazing delivery of this line. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it hits. It hits. Because... When I when I when I hear that lyric and especially when I read it, I'm just like, yeah. I think about the times where I'm like, I honestly did have a great high school experience, mm-hmm. especially comparatively to like a lot of yeah. stories you hear. Like, I feel like, <laughs> not to brag, I was, <laughs> I was like fairly. Uh, well, I was fairly well liked. I didn't in in high school, especially in like junior and senior year. Like, I was. I don't think you could ask many people in my high school like do you like Stieglitz and they'd say mm-hmm. no 
They probably okay. I I think that I was well liked, and that's not not in a dickish way, just like in a way that I was like very friendly towards everyone. Yeah, I understand. And um, like I would stay after and just like hang out with people like in classrooms and in hallways because I like, enjoyed. Uh, I I didn't enjoy being in high school, but I enjoyed. Well, yeah, I enjoyed being there. I didn't enjoy like the school aspect because I school fucking sucked. But like the, the yeah, social the aspect sucks. was fine of high school. <laughs> but then like yeah. if I think about going back to high school now, if somebody told me like, oh no, you yeah. have to do that all over again. Like everything was a dream from age seventeen until now. I I honestly think I would just end my life. Like I I could not fucking go through that again. I just couldn't like. It's yeah. just too much. It's it would be so, it's too fucking oh, much. Yeah. I mean, I also had like a fine high school experience. wasn't awful. was not awful at all. was not yeah. the best ever. But right, I didn't right. peak in high school, so that's good. Yeah, Same. right, 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 exactly. Yeah. So I also think that too. It's like sometimes I think back about the things that worried me in high school, and it's hilarious to me. And I'm like, I'm so glad that. I am a like so much more confident as a person now, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. also just like all these things that were stressors to me. I'm just glad I don't give a shit about anymore. Yeah, yeah. Nice. There was so much, and it's just like the the lack of freedom too is like mm-hmm. one of the biggest stressors. But like, man, I would never. And like, I think about like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about like specific memories. Like, yeah, that was a good memory. That was a yeah. good memory. Would I do that again if I had to? No, Ooh. I'm glad it happened, and yeah. I would like to move the fuck on from it. So my fifth and final. LCD sound system layer comes from the song Tonight off of American Dream. And so I pulled a lot of lyrics from the song because it's more the vibe I want to talk about than the the lyrics maybe themselves. But let's just say the lyric is wow. everybody's mm-hmm. singing the same song. It goes tonight, 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 tonight. I never realized these artists thought so much about dying. But truth be told, we all have the same end could make you cry, 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 cry. But I'm telling you, this is the best news you're getting all week. And then later in the song goes, and all the hits are saying the same thing. There's only tonight, 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 tonight. And life is finite, but shit, it feels like forever. It feels like forever. So I love this song. It's just like a great satirization, like satire of pop songs that are like it's the it's tonight's the night you got to get on that table you got to put your hand in the air because it's the only fucking night that matters because you're gonna die and you're gonna be old one day and like you're young today so many pop songs are that just about the fucking yeah it's you know the, night. the more i uh think about his lyrics the more i really do like them because it is so True. I never realized these artists thought so much about dying. Like yeah. those songs <laughs> really thing, yeah. are when you explore those songs, when you really yeah. get down deep into it, they're not about having fun at a party. They are about our looming and uh ever present mortality. And you will <laughs> yeah. die. And they constantly remind you of that in the club. The club the yeah. advertisement in the club should just basically be like spend your money now because you absolutely 100 percent are going to die soon yeah no i love so that's a, this song is a lot of his lyrics are so tongue-in-cheek and like you wanted a hit is satirical about the music industry this is satirical about the music industry losing my edge is very satirical about like art school kids who think they're hip and or think they're like cool because they know this music or that music mm. And so this is so fun because it's like this song, like some, I don't know if you ever had that pressure and during the pandemic, it's a little different, but pre pandemic, let's say the pressure of like, you got to go out tonight. And like, if you don't, you're going to let your friends down. Or if your friend doesn't go out, then you pressure them. You're like, come on, it's Friday. It's your friends. And like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Like I feel that pressure for sure. And I've totally given that pressure to other people, but there is something funny. This song is just celebrating the like, fuck you. I'm not going to Yeah. I no, I shit. love that. This, that, I love that vibe that it's just like, I didn't know this song that well, but like the more I think about these, these lyrics are so fucking readable. Cause sometimes 
I really am like, I mean, there are, I definitely have been the guy to be like, we have to go out tonight. Come on. We're going to die. Mm-hmm. But then there are times, it's like that Lana Del Rey song too, where it's like, I'm pretty, I'm getting pretty tired. Oh, is that Lord? Oh, it's Lord. I'm very tired of being told to put my hands up in the air. Yeah. So there. Yeah. Just like, fuck you. You know what? Uh, no, I don't want to go out tonight. Okay? What is that song by in. Fun that was like big a couple of years ago? We are young. Tonight. We are young Yeah and like So exact, that's peas. like the type of song That exactly this is talking about right yeah. yep. It's like yep. tonight we are young Yeah. Tomorrow we will be dead <laughs> So tonight give us your drugs Because it's our night <laughs> It's like it's like Those songs are basically like A man coming in to your health class And showing you Dismembered yeah. genitals And being like this is gonna what This is what happens when you have unprotected sex it's but basically the also same like, thing. Despite the parody of it, it still makes me want to go out tonight. It's still like, well, oh, yeah, crap, yeah. life is finite. I'd rather like, hear <laughs> that than be like, you are young. I'd rather be like, life is finite. Go out tonight. Hang with your friends or do what you want to do. Well, yeah. Just go out. I yeah. hope that that metaphor I just made was clear and people aren't like, what the fuck are you talking about? So there's a just one more verse I think is so fun later in the song is we had a paper trail that led to our secrets, but embarrassing pictures have now all been deleted by versions of selves that we thought were the best ones. Till versions of versions of others repeating come laughing at everything we thought was important while still making mistakes that you thought you had learned from. And that, like, there's a lot, it's a mouthful, but that, there's so much fun distilled in that lyric. Just the idea of, like, previous generations had that paper trail and we had that paper trail of like pictures on Instagram Mm -hmm. but then those pictures on Facebook and Instagram that embarrassed us or that we thought we looked like sexy and at one point are great then we delete in the future because we're embarrassed by the way we looked back then because we were different and then in the future the future version of you that has learned from other people and wanting to be hip in the future comes back and deletes the photos of like current day you because like you think you look bad now but now you think you look sexy but in the future you'll think you look bad now yeah (laughs) and then it's like making fun of yourself and you're still not learning any lessons like you're still making the same mistakes and i it's just so fun because we do think we're better we do think we're better yeah and it goes back to like we just we just mentioned those like cringy old facebook posts mm-hmm. and stuff that you're just like oh my god what the fuck or even In just like reading years. old messages sometimes i go back facebook messenger it keeps messages forever so like i've seen messages that i've written yeah. in like 2008 to people and i'm just like yeah. oh my god what the f- who was In like I? a couple years your your grandkids gonna go up to you and be like oh granddaddy steaglitz i listen to the lyric boys podcast <laughs> First of all, Lucian Flores, what a hunk. Secondly, what is this word railing you used a lot in the first couple episodes <laughs> and then dropped from vocabulary? <laughs> just like, whoops. Yeah, I or did. Are you going to be embarrassed voice. at the point or are you going to be like, I stand by my jokes? Ladies and gentlemen, we've all made mistakes. I'd like to formally apologize. No, I stand by it, okay? I kept <laughs> those jokes in. What I could do is go back, delete all the mentions of railing, and then re-upload them like nothing has ever happened. But guess what, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? I'm not a perfect person, as the great Hoobastank once said. That's true. Hoobastank. <laughs> Shout out. We get a portion of every Hoobastank CD ever sold. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by <laughs> Hoobastank. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, this is a great song. Tonight, this is the one Grammy I think they won, like I said. Um, but this song slaps. It's so fun. It's so good. It's so bassy. And it's so funny. It's such a great message. Tonight, do something. Hey, while you're listening to this podcast, we're glad you're sp- we're, you're spending your dwindling time on earth listening to the Lyric Boys podcast. We appreciate yeah, that. You know you're going to die. And uh, this is how you're choosing to spend your life okay yeah you want to hear my next lyric i do that's how i want to spend my life <laughs> my last lyric is wow <laughs> every choice i make 
it feels a lot more weighty when I'm like, yes, I choose to spend my life this way. Oh my God, I know. I can't. I can't. <laughs> so uh, you want to write this tweet or how else are you going to spend your life? Spend your life. You, your mm. Clock is ticking, buddy. Clock is ticking. God damn, I got to go out and make memories. I got to make children now. <laughs> Somebody get drunk with me right now. Right now. <laughs> my fifth and final lyric is from the song, You Wanted a Hit, off of the album, This Is Happening. Uh, the lyric is, whoops, you wanted a hit, but maybe we don't do hits. I try and try. It ends up feeling kind of wrong. And so you wanted a hit. Well, this is how we do hits. You wanted a hit, but that's not what we do. Yeah, You wanted it smart, but honestly, I'm not smart. No, honestly, we're never smart. So, again, very direct he's being very direct here and i love Mm -hmm. that i'm picturing a man in the studio (laughs) Mm -hmm. record producers around him and then being like all right we're gonna get this hit we've always wanted and in his rebellion he sings this and they're like staring at the record manager it's like every scene in a rock movie has that scene where you're just staring being like yeah (laughs) yeah singing your song about the industry (laughs) <laughs> yeah exactly every scene does have that and every like biopic is just like yeah. fuck our manager you didn't believe in us we'll have to believe in ourselves yeah no i i do like that i mean there's the classic fuck the record industry song that every band has now every like successful band has a song that's like this industry get out of here so what's enjoyable about this is I just love the idea of you wanted a hit. Well, this is how we do hits. Very fun to me. It's like, this is our version of a hit. Like we're trying here. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> like, but also once again, it gets very meta, right? It's like, we're trying. This is the hit. This is the hit song right now. Right now you're listening to a hit. Right. That once blows it, my mind sometimes. It's like, well, I'm, I'm so confused. Which one is it? Am I listening to the hit? Is this, this is, 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 does the hit exist in this, in the hit? cinematic universe okay what is the hit and what is the man making the hit i will say james murphy's lyrics are i think by far the most meta we've done before so meta well they're direct they're very direct and they're very they're, self-referential yeah well meta in that way self referencing the band referencing his own lyrics referencing the construct of the song and what the song is supposed to make you feel and how music is supposed to make you feel like yeah <laughs> no one else we've done has done that as much <laughs> no one's like this is the part of the song clap your hands suck wow i meant to say slap my ass slap my ass <laughs> clap well, your hands and slap my ass is that part of the song <laughs> well so, yeah i mean sometimes so, it makes me think just like i mentioned this in an in a very early episode but like there are those songs i like like this one where it's like a, a classic example for me is that ed sheeran song where it's just like we were listening to tiny dancer right okay so like does tiny is this a song then or like like are you singing a song right now like okay mm. okay yeah <sighs> let me try you, and get in the rabbit hole it. right yeah where it's just like if you were listening to tiny dancer then do these two songs exist in the same world? Well, it's like any movie, you know, like any movie you watch with the big celebrity. Yeah, I guess so. Does that celebrity exist in that world? You know, like any Tom Hanks movie in Castaway, does Tom Hanks exist? You know, like that's the weird thing that if you think, if you truly think about any movie, I, any I think about movie, that sometimes I think about that like more often than people probably should. Every movie starring an actor is a world in which that actor doesn't exist. Yeah. Basically, so that cast of that movie just doesn't exist. Or the, they do, but they're not. It's confusing. Right. No, that, <clears throat> that's so interesting. Like. Hmm, so interesting. Yes, quite a quandary. <laughs> no, like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You wanted a good podcast? But maybe we don't do good podcasts. Don't mention podcasts. Do other <laughs> podcasts exist while we're podcasting? Wait, do we exist? Do we exist? Yes. I. <laughs> what am I? Who am I? What is? If is <laughs> is and isn't isn't, then isn't isn't is? 
Are we all Yahweh? <laughs> Should we just write these fucking lyrics? <laughs> so this is the part of the podcast, Lyric Boys. Lyric Boys, OG stands who've been around since day one. You guys know what the deal is. This is the part of the podcast where we come up with our own version, our own lyrics for LCD Sound System. So for for a brief moment, like James Murphy, uh, spirit... <laughs> Enter our bodies. Appears. Well, does he exist though? If we're writing his lyrics for him, we're writing imaginary LCD sound system lyrics for an imaginary song, and we're gonna take like two minutes to just jot some stuff down. But point is, it's improvised. It's fun. I, we none of us came in here with the plans today, okay? And now, in like, there's gonna be an, a cut and edit through the magic of radio. And then we'll deliver our lyrics. So sit tight and grab a cold one. All right, audience. Well, we just wrote our own LCD sound system lyrics and we'll uh, sing them to you, say them to you. We're going to have a great ball. So my made up LCD <laughs> sound system song. Have a great song. ball. Great ball. Great ball. <laughs> All right. Let me hear your lyrics. My, this comes from the song, the made up LCD sound system song penned by one Lucian Flores. That's uh, me. It's called Board of My Friends. Ooh, ooh. All of my guys suck to be around. I'm wow. sorry I said it, but the evidence is unfound. Of them being cool and shaking my hands. At parties, none of these bros want to hear music by bands. So I'll be alone tonight, surfing on my computer, secretly afraid I'll have to kill an intruder. For walking in on me sleeping before 10. God, I hate the weekend again and again. Boom. First of all, great rhymes. <laughs> Thank Second you for called A-A-B-B, A-A-B-B. Um, I'm insulted. I feel like we maybe need to talk. Uh, I, I don't know where to begin. I am crying right now. I'm enraged. How dare you? Also, clearly none of that was about me. It was about everybody else. It's about a... I'm imagining a, a embodying a, a, a mid-40s man who's tired of hanging out with friends who don't want to hear music by bands at what parties. Who do they want to they, hear music by? Pop artist, DJs, electronic mm-hmm. acts. They just, you know, not One bands. LCD this, sound system. This old man is just like, why can't we just listen to bands anymore? Sometimes I think that. Like yeah, and then he goes home, and he's af- he's afraid that someone's gonna try to kill him for going to sleep before ten. That this feels like an old man vibe. That is an old man vibe. Uh, but right. we stand. Give me your LCD sound system lyric. My song is called um, "Hmm." Let's call it "All Night." Ooh. You asked if I exist. Will my body still persist after we've partied all night? We've partied all night, all night, all night. I'm trying to channel that that repetitive James Murphy <laughs> stuff. That's true. Well, I'm sure I'll never die if I could sing this song tonight, but I'll never sing your pretentious anthemic New York City slickin' song. <laughs> that is a man who's just coming from the Midwest who tried to get <laughs> tickets to Hamilton, who could not get tickets, and is just yelling <laughs> at the like, ticket counter man. <laughs> Listen, your pretentious New York City slickin' Hamilton concert. You gosh darn, you make me so rootin' tootin' mad. Is that the whole lyric? That's I the like lyric. I, right, well, I was channeling that. the. Yeah. I was channeling the repetitiveness, right? I was channeling also. Um, yeah. The first song, what's it called? Um, Losing my edge. Hmm. Nah, I'm saying. All right, let's I'm say saying. them again. Because our audience needs an encore. So, <laughs> audience, this is the time where you see that little thirty-second thing with the uh, arrow. That's when you hit, hit, hit it, hit it. I'm just kidding. Please listen to us say these again. Wow, <laughs> I don't even get that. Sometimes friends are mean. <laughs> so I do my enjoy my song yours. dedicated to Andrew Stieglitz. It's called "Board of My Friends." What? I thought you said it wasn't about me. It's Oops. fucking only about you. Oops, that, that click. All of my friends suck to be around. I'm sorry I said it, but the evidence is um. Fuck. I'm sorry I said it, but the evidence is 
unfound of them being cool and shaking my hands at parties none of these bros want to hear music by bands so i'll be alone tonight surfing on my computer secretly afraid i'll have to kill an intruder for walking in on me sleeping before 10 god i hate the weekend again and again and then intruder lcd sounds as a form would just go again and again and again and yeah. again and again and again and again, and again and <laughs> until again. an epic jam fades out uh, again and again weekend again I um I like it. I think you need to go to therapy for having bad friends. But also I like it. What if your friend said that? Uh excuse me, you need to go to therapy for having bad friends. Yeah, I'm one of them and yeah, I'm toxic and yeah, you fucking suck. Well, I'm going to be straight up with you. In the years that we've been friends and it's been a while, you're probably going to want to get therapy for what I've done to you. I just that's the nicest thing a piece of advice I could give you. That's a very funny image of a person who just knows their self so much to know that they're so toxic in other people's lives. It's like, you hang out with me. We have a great time. You cry on a therapist's couch. <laughs> but not self-aware enough to stop being that way. Oh, no. All right. Here's my lyrics <laughs> your, again. Yeah. You asked if I exist. Will my body still persist? After we've partied all night. We've partied all night. All night all night well i'm sure i'll never die if i could sing this song tonight but i'll never sing your pretentious anthemic new york city slickin song Ooh. that was the lcd census episode of the lyric boys podcast which is still technically going on but that was the episode so don't question it don't question wait a second the if that was the episode and this is still the episode then what is, is there this? a universe where the episode doesn't exist and only this part of the episode exists what i'm is so this? confused if you enjoy this trip do- through musical lyric land um that's a place then do me a favor, do Andrew a favor, and do yourself a favor and subscribe to the Lyric Boys podcast. You will get all of our podcasts as soon as they are released on the internet. So you'll get to hear us dive into the sweet lyrical stylings of like Arcade Fire or like Interpol or Blink-182 or Bruce Springsteen or all of the tons of bands we've done. We've done like 20-something episodes. I don't even know. We're going to do a ton more. We there. We're never going to run out of bands because people still put, it, put out music with words. So this podcast is going to go on for a while, and you're going to want to be there with us, growing hand in hand. We'll and probably hey. end when music only becomes TikTok sea shanties. And even then, we mm-hmm. might, we'll find a way. Yeah, that, that is the end point, I believe. TikTok sea shanties, for sure. <laughs> but they're still pretty slappy. All right. So anyway, we're also on social media. We are on TikTok. Yeah, that's right. We're fucking millennials on TikTok, but we're not coming at you, teens. We're not like, we're not yelling at you for making us feel ashamed about our skinny jeans. We we know our place in society. We know that it's okay for kids not to think we're cool because we're 28. And why would we fucking want the validation of like a child? That's weird to me that people freak out about that. Anyway, wow. We're on so TikTok. you basically said, listen, <laughs> we're not here to invalidate you being on TikTok, but also fuck you. I guess. I don't even know what I say sometimes. The world is a blur. <laughs> we're on uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and part of Facebook. It, part of it, part we're of it. <laughs> we are at the Lyric Boys. We post clips from the podcast, and we're there to take messages from you guys if you want to DM us and, and tell us about <laughs> your experiences listening to the podcast. No dick pics. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm on Twitter at NYC Lucian, and Andrew's uh, gonna tell you about a little, little, little slappy ditty that's playing right now in the background. Well, there is a slappy ditty playing in the background right now, and that shit didn't just materialize out of thin fucking air. Nobody shat wow. out this music, okay? I made it with my own bare, raw, bleeding hands. I labored for you this podcast music, and guess what? I have some other ditties as well. They are, <laughs> they are in. They're at freelancerbandny.bandcamp.com or freelancer on SoundCloud, or you can Google freelancer and just pick which link you'd want. You can open a tab of one and another tab of the other and hit play at the exact same time and see which one ends first. 
I do love like listening to other podcasts. We have like one of the more aggressive <laughs> and, and inconsistent. Please subscribe and follow us on social media deliveries. Other podcasts is like oh, we're on social media here, and you can follow us. We like make it a five minute affair. <laughs> and so honey, long. that's why you like it. Let me tell you something. I have to loop the the theme song like eighty <laughs> times to make it fit. That one. Yes, this one. All right. So that's LCD Sound System episode. That was the LCD Sound System episode. This is the tail end of the LCD Sound System. I'm Lucian Flores. That's Andrew Stieglitz. We are the Lyric Boys, and we'll see you next Monday. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>